Hi everyone, on Booktube is Andrea here. Now, I haven't put a video up for a week. Various reasons for that one. I've had quite a few sinus headaches, which I get, and they're very painful, so I just tend to take some painkillers and go to sleep. And two, obviously, I've been rehearsing my show, and the show is this week. It starts tonight. Um, so last night we were last week we were rehearsing longer than um, normal, uh, finishing very late, and an extra day as well. So I haven't really had much time to post any videos. However, I'm on annual leave this week with the show, and obviously next week everything gets back to normal. So I should be able to get back to um, uploading some videos uh, more and more frequently. So. This is my uh, non-fiction November week two update. So just a quick one to let you know how I'm getting on. Uh, in the week one update, I advised that I'd finished the book, The Keys of Egypt, loved it. Um, and this week I also finished um, Uncle Jack by Tony Williams with Humphrey Price, which is the story of John Williams. So John Williams, he was the man who founded the Library of Wales in um, Aberystwyth. And Tony Williams is um, something like a great great nephew or something like that, and decided that his uncle could possibly be Jack the Ripper, um, as could anybody who was in Whitechapel or could be placed in Whitechapel at the time of the murders. Um, his uncle was a surgeon, his uncle did work in London for a long time before retiring back to Wales. He was Welsh. He, um, in his notes, there was found a um, uh, entry that said Mary Ann Nichols abortion in 1885. That was three years before Mary Ann Nichols became the first canonical vi victim. I think she was the first of uh, the, the killer known as Jack the Ripper. So from that point he decided that his uncle was Jack the Ripper. Other things that he pointed to his uncle possibly being Jack was um, the fact that he kept one surgeon's knife with a broken tip in his archive at the um, Wales National Library of Wales um, along with three slides with some animal matter on them that they don't know what they are because they've never been looked at whether or not they're human or animal they're definitely not plant and also his diary for 1888 had many pages ripped out of it which is not necessarily sinister because if you write something and then you go back and you think oh god I write, why did I write that you rip it out however it does sound like uh, John Williams John Williams was a very strange man he wasn't a very loving man he you know but I think that was more in keeping with the times than anything else uh, the problem is, anybody who's got a relative who was alive in 1888 and could possibly have been in Whitechapel could be the Ripper, basically. So I don't think it solved the case. It's an interesting read, more for the fact it tells you a lot about the founding of the National Library of Wales, which I thought was fascinating. I've never been there. I live in Wales, but I've never been there. Never been to Aberystwyth. It's one of the places I would like to visit that, the library, because I like libraries, obviously, because you know books. So that's that one, I finished that. I think I gave it a three out of five stars on Goodreads. I'm not actually sure, I'd have to look it up. But it was an okay read. It was nice and easy. And like I said, it was interesting, um, the bits about the, the finding of the library. It did go over and over and over some of the, the historical aspects of John Williams himself, but don't think he's Jack the Ripper. I don't think we'll ever know who Jack the Ripper is, although there's several um, theories and several things going on on the Jack the Ripper forum. Facebook forum, um, which people are saying I know who he is or I think he might be this person, but then there's no evidence and the chances of finding evidence, the, even now, even if it's a written confession, uh, is likely to be, yeah, but is it really? So anyway, I might do a, a whole feature on Jack the Ripper books later because I have got quite a few and more <laughs> that I haven't read. So I haven't started... Um, Books make a lot of noise. Uh, Roses from the Birth from the Earth Above from Anne Frank by Caroline Lee. Yeah, but I'll probably read this next week when I go back to work because it's a nice thin volume to take and read. Take the dust jacket off and read in my lunch breaks. So um, I have read this, but I want to read it again. It's been a long time since I've read this book and it is really good. Um, I bought it with a copy of the Diary of Anne Frank, which is behind me somewhere. Here it is. So this is the copy of the diary. Of Anne Frank and there is the biography so yes I think they're very important it's a bit dirty but I need to clean that book put that back on the shelf that's all in my history section so 
I will do a bookshelf tour at some point but I'm in the process of also trying to sort out the book collection and how it's stacked so I can get another bookcase into the room and just oh, there's just so much to do so that's probably going to be next week's read I am currently obviously reading this massive tome on the Romanovs. I do take the dust jacket off when I'm reading it because I don't want to ruin it. Um, I'm actually on, it's about 700 pages long, I'm on page 192, coming up to Catherine the Great. I was worried when I started thought of reading this that I haven't read anything about Russian history before, I don't know anything about the Rom Romanovs, and I thought maybe this is a bit too much for me to read not knowing much about them other than what happened to the last Tsar and his children and I don't know much about that but this is a really easy read the book is so well written it's split up into it, it doesn't even have chapters it has acts and scenes and casts it tells you exactly who everybody is um so yeah I'm finding this a very very easy read it's very very interesting um absolutely fascinating I can't wait to just carry on with this and I will be reading this in the week this week before I go and do my show I've been reading it this morning I am loving it and I do love the cover it's a very very pretty cover yeah so that's how I'm doing so far with the four books I picked for non-fiction November I also picked a non-fiction book called Under the Rainbow by John Carlyle out of my TBR jar now that's about his relationship with Judy Garland I'm hoping to get to that if I can once I finish Roses from the Earth or, you know, whatever. Because next week, uh, and then we have to have much more time to read because obviously the show's over. I haven't got much time to read at the moment. I can hear all, excuse me. <sighs> so that's how I'm doing. I am also reading a bit of fiction here and there just to break up the, no the non-fiction. As much as I love non-fiction, sometimes you just want a nice escapist read, but I'm not reading it as quickly as I would because I'm trying to focus on that. I haven't bought many books this month yeah I do have two subscription boxes coming so look out for unboxings they will be probably next week or the end of this week I'm not sure it depends one's sent out today and I know one's being sent out Friday so that will not be next week I hope to do some more Marin spotlights I might even film one in a second um but I'll be back really soon with another video I hope you're all good out there if you've liked this video obviously give it a thumbs up and obviously leave me some comments in the below let me know what you're reading if you're joining in with non-fiction november i love to you know i like recommendations for non-fiction so please let me know and uh, obviously comment share subscribe and um, yeah give it a big thumbs up i will see you soon bye